Okay, so this is part two of the common pitfalls associated with map making, and this one is really awesome. We're going to be talking about um, standardizing or normalizing data, and also uh, the ecological fallacy and the modifiable aerial unit problem. Okay, so here's, here's the setup. We've got a whole bunch of people, or maybe they're houses that are sort of evenly distributed across the landscape. Um, on the left, we have five kilometer by five kilometer areas. These are, let's call them blocks or, um, you know, like census blocks, but a very evenly distributed aggregation scheme, okay? Um, here we've got the same distribution of people or houses, but we have a different zoning scheme. Here we've broken it up into these trapezoids um, to create a different kind of um, aggregation. So, if we sum between each of these, we've got 16 people living in each one of the five kilometer by five kilometer evenly distributed kind of blocks. And we have a very different distribution of population if we sum the number of people in the more irregular, right? Here, we're just applying a choropleth color ramp to each one. These are all the same value. They're all gonna have the same color. And if we have a, um, this kind of cream color to a dark red color scheme, they're going to be distributed this way. And notice that the larger areas have the highest numbers of people living in them. And that makes perfect sense because they're bigger. And the smaller ones have the lowest number of people in them. Should be very um, intuitive. But this is, number one, why we always say um, don't use choropleth to represent raw counts because the area is going to bias the number of, of observations within it. You'd expect more in a bigger area. So you want to, whenever you're doing a choropleth map like this, always represent a rate or a ratio or a density, something that's been normalized. Okay, um, great. We don't want to be fooled into thinking that there's a pattern here. It's just an artifact of the aggregation scheme. The pattern, the underlying pattern is completely uniform. Okay, so if we looked at that same uh, distribution of people as people per square kilometer, um, obviously we get an even distribution because the dots were completely evenly distributed. And when we look at these um, non-uniform aggregation areas, that plays out. We have a very slight difference here between 0.9 and 1.1, but in general, all of the areas are evenly, they're reflecting an even distribution of the population. So this, this is why you'd want to represent uh, using densities or some kind of normalized value and not just a raw count when you're using choropleth. And this is called the modifiable area aerial unit problem or the problem when your area unit is modifiable, right? Going from an even, um, you know, consistent aggregation scheme versus the um, irregular, larger, smaller aggregation scheme. So let's dig into the weeds there a little bit more. If each one of those people, we've recorded a value for each one. And so each person has an income value associated with them and a daily water consumption value associated with them. When we plot those up against each other, there's very to no little correlation. We have an R squared value of 0 0.001. So for each person, we're plotting up their income against their daily water consumption. When we aggregate, so we're applying the, um, the consistent one, we're taking the, I'm, let's just say the average, so we're taking the average income for this, six, this set of 16 people, the average income for that set of 16 people, we're starting to see a, some kind of pattern form. And if we plot up um, now with the reduced number, um, just this average income against this average water consumption, we've changed the relationship, okay? Now we're seeing that we've got a slightly stronger relationship this has serious implications, right? And if you're not transparent about it, you're lying. Yeah, so aggregating can change the relationship between the variables. It's the same underlying individual data, 
but now we've created a stronger positive uh, relationship between income and water consumption just by aggregating or averaging uh, over this area. Let's plot it up with the other uh, aggregation scheme. So with a more non-uniform aggregation, now we're taking the average for this polygon and this polygon, and look what's happened to our relationship. We've completely blown it up. Completely different analyses outcomes due to the aggregation scheme. This should be putting up huge red flags for you, and hopefully you've seen this many times before, and this isn't the first time that you've heard of the modifiable aerial unit problem, um, but yeah, you need to be very aware of this. The, so here's the take home. The statistical relationship at one level of aggregation can't be assumed to hold true for other levels of aggregation, including going down to the individual level. That's called the ecological fallacy. All you can really say is at this specific aggregation level, this is the relationship that we see. But it doesn't. If you're, if you're talking about an aggregation level here, it does not hold true for the individual and it does not hold true if you change the, the aerial unit or the way um, the aerial unit is distributed. Okay? So, um, yeah, rule of thumb. Don't map raw counts or totals if the area units aren't uniform in shape and size. You should always be mapping a rate, a density, some kind of normalized value. And don't assume that the relationship that you see is going to hold true at other aerial aggregation sizes. Okay, so if you can't make a choropleth map with a raw count like population, what could you do instead? One thing you could do is use um, proportional symbols where the symbol size is proportional to the change in value for your input data. The problem with that is that sometimes there's such a large range of values that the to remain proportional, the larger ones just blow up and cover the whole map. So you have to be a little bit careful about this. Um, it does work a little bit better if the range in values that you're trying to map isn't huge. Um, obviously, you can normalize the counts um, to the area itself. So you could divide the number of people by the area of each enumeration unit, or you can, um, well, let's see, what am I looking at here? So this is state populations. Oh, that's just the pure population, and this is after it's been um, uh, normalized by the area. So this is the population density. So uh, a fairly different looking map. Um, and then here is what I was getting at, I think. Um, nope, this is the same thing. Standardizing, again, by uh, just the total number of areas sorry, the total number of acres of forested land, and then the percentage of the total. So how many acres of forested land divided by the total area of the state? Here, completely different. Definitely driven by just how much land there is in general, but relative to the state itself, um, the Northeast has the highest proportions of forested land. Okay. This is what I think I was getting at. Um, normalizing counts to the underlying count. So uh, estimated police cause death in states and districts. Um, let's see here. This is the number of, and then this would be the number divided by the total population for the state. So not divided by the area of the state, but um, the number of people, uh, uh, the number of police cause deaths per 100,000 people. So a way of normalizing by um, another value. Instead of the state area, you'd be dividing by the population of the area. Okay, and then, um, yeah, so I just wanted to also bring up this idea that, um, let me just show you all three of them. So looking at these quickly, it suggests there's a clustering of high and low rates around the same parts of the country, right? So we've got, this is the top 10% of counties with highest death rates, and this is the bottom 10% of counties with the uh, lowest deaths rate, death rates. So the highest and the lowest death rates. 
And you might wonder what's going on. If local environmental factors are to blame for kidney cancer deaths, why would they be present in one county and not in an adjacent county? And so you might wonder, well, um, you know, could county regulations be driving this or something like that? So how could we have such disparate values in neighboring counties between light and dark? So it turns out that a lot of these counties where this is happening are really low population counties, counties that don't have a lot of people. And if you are taking um, a rate, um, if a county has a thousand people, and if you assume that the death is like five people per hundred thousand people, but there's only a thousand people in your, you know, in your um, set of observations, you're gonna get a zero deaths for that county. But if you round it up a little bit, you might get one. But one out of 1,000 is very different than an expected rate of five per 100,000. And so what you get are these artificial, um, artificial, exaggerate, uh, artificial exaggerations. And so what happens is sometimes when you're doing these rates, you do end up introducing bias anyway. And you have to be really careful to um, not, um, not create results that aren't reflected in the data due to really low numbers of observations. So when you're dealing with, with um, counties like this where you've got very low counts that are going to translate to a low density or a low rate for that county, um, you need to be very careful. And the smarter thing to do might be to aggregate a bunch of neighboring small population counties together and create a larger uh, area that gets you to an N or a number of observations that's actually comparable to other counties. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And the other thing you could try and do is take a larger temporal set of data to get a larger sample size for some of those counties that might be throwing off um, your results. Um, that was kind of a last minute thing I just wanted to throw in there. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail because we need to keep moving. But if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Thanks.